around that, the time that my grandfather died a number of years ago, uh, people were prompted to tell all kinds of stories. They were telling about his growing up on the farm in Ireland, uh, how he came through Ellis Island in New York, how it was that he ultimately came to Boston. You know, knowing the story of our family's history can be really exciting and it can be really comforting because it is a part of who we are. I think that's why I love the accounts that we've been reading from the Acts of the Apostles during this week. Seeing how our leaders and faithful came together to make such big decisions in the young church and how they made decisions to move forward in a very real way, in a very spiritual way. Peter and Paul are our ancestors. Barnabas and Silas are our family. Their story is our story. And of course, like us, they're deeply rooted in Christ. The Gospel writer, St. John, who of course is another member of our family, passes on to us some of Jesus' most beautiful and some of his most challenging words. It was not you who chose me, but it was I who chose you, and I have appointed you. That's our worth. That's who we are. And then what are we supposed to do with all of that? What's the command? What's the challenge? To bear fruit that will last and to love one another. You can get a sense that the early church was energized by that call. They came together and then they were sent out. And because they knew that God loved them, they were able to go and love one another. And so here we are now, standing on their shoulders, paving the way for the next generation. As Catholics, we love by watching out for those who are in need. Our parish at St. Mary's in Dedham, every single day, responds to people who need food, people who come to us or call us needing prayers, sometimes people who come for counseling, people who make visits to our chapel every single day. We Catholics also love by speaking the truth to power in the world, reminding people who human beings are and what real love is all about and what it looks like. It's not always easy or it's not always popular and it can even meet with ridicule but it is the loving thing that we do. And so these readings are like our family scrapbook. They're like our photo album. I think in these days in early May, we're all uh, going to a lot of graduation parties, confirmations, first communions, anniversaries, birthdays. I know we have a lot of those going on in my family right now. And at times like that, you tend to see uh, people bringing out a lot of pictures or now people are, are putting uh, CDs together so that people can watch videos and get a memory of things. Uh, even uh, I've heard a couple of songs written for different occasions. We want and we need to celebrate our past because again, it tells us a lot about who we are. Well, who we are is very deeply connected and rooted in the history of who we are as a Christian family. So our roots are very, very deeply planted. They're planted even as far as the mind and as the heart of God. And so we take up that challenge that we've been given. We take the gift by having been called by God in Jesus' words, by having been chosen by God, but with a purpose. And the purpose 
is so that we will know that we have been appointed for a task. We've been appointed for a really important job. And that really important job is to go out and to bear fruit that's going to last. And the fruit that lasts is helping people to know the love of God and to share that with others. And so we take up that challenge. We take up that challenge, of course, by our prayers. We take up that challenge by what we do. Our prayers and what we do. This is how we show what it is to love.